left on the fridge. Ah! I saw it. And I've <laughs> the food and sort of numbered it. My mum might phone. Might. And your mum and... This is a pleasant surprise this time. People. <laughs> I can cope on my own. Can life. you? I'm texting the world. Craig Owens can do it on his own. No one is coming to help me. I know someone. I'm coping on my own. Surely. I'm yep. coping on my own. Hello, Craig. I'm back. <laughs> oh, you've redecorated. I don't like <laughs> it. It's a different house. We moved. Yes, that's it. Whatever you are, get off this path. Ah. Ah. <laughs> that's why. Okay. Yeah. It makes sense now. I was like, You're right. she's treating him like he's a grown ass baby or something. <laughs> Indeed, there is. Oh. Yes, I'm in on my own with the baby. Yes, because no one thinks I can cope on my own, which is so unfair because I can't cope. <laughs> I can't. He just cries all the time. Alfie. What Alfie. Anyway? Yes, he likes that Alfie. Though personally, he prefers to be called Stormageddon, Dark Lord of All. Sorry, what? <laughs> That's what he calls himself. <laughs> How do you know he that? Speaks baby. I speak baby. Uh. And everybody else is peasants. That's a bit unfortunate. <laughs> what are you here for? What's happening? Never mind what. Mm, nothing. Yeah. No, you've noticed something. You've you've got your noticing face on. I have nightmares about that. Noticing face. face. Stop it. Am I noticing? No. No, I am not. He I'm can't help himself. Oh, shut up! I'm just dropping in on a friend. The last thing I need right now is a patina of teleport energy. I'm going. Do teleport energy. Going. I'm going away now. No, you're not. <laughs> it goes up, tiddly up, it goes Red. down. Oh, it says danger. Oh, rubbish. Lifts aren't dangerous. Do I look like I'm stupid? <laughs> <laughs> Quiet, Stormy. Stormy. Oh, are you going to kiss me? Yes, Greg, yes, I am. Would you like that? A bit out of practice, but I've had some wonderful feedback. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, no, I, I can't. I'm taking... Oh, my God! I know where it's safe is for me and Alfie, and that's right next to you. Is that so? Yeah, you always win. You always survive. Uh, he does. Yes. Those were the days. I can help you. Oh. Babies are sweet. People talk to you. That's why I usually take a human with me. <laughs> so I'm your baby. You're my baby. Big ass baby. <laughs> oh, she's gonna. Yeah, she's gonna think they're a couple. You and your partner and the baby. Partner, yes, I like it. Is it better than companion? Companion. Sounds old fashioned. There's no need to be coy these days. <laughs> do you do that? It's a power, isn't it? Some sort of weird alien hypnotic power. I bet you excrete some sort of gas <laughs> makes people love you. Would that I could, Craig. A cyber man? I thought he was a little silver rat. It's not a rat. It's a cyber mat. <laughs> <laughs> Go at me just because I don't know the names. Craig! It's a coincidence! <laughs> Happens, it's what the universe does for. Can I have your autograph, please? Uh, yeah, sure. What? Fun. Rory. Oh. Oh. What's going on there, though? <laughs> oh, that's right. How about that? <laughs> kind of reminds me of Rose. The Series one, episode one. The setting at least. Uh, I love I love how the camera panned down slowly. Ooh. Whoa. Doctor, listen to me. If the Cybermen are here, then we're not safe. We've gotta go. We've gotta go back to base. We've got a base. When do we get a base? <laughs> Tom. A normal human life on Earth. Mortgage repayments. The nine to five of assistance. Ugh. Nagging nine to five. spiritual emptiness. Save the tears for later, boy. <laughs> You'll need them. But I am old, Storm. Yeah, really old. 
I am so old. So near the end. <laughs> you could walk among the stars. They don't actually look like that, you know. They are rather more impressive. Hey! Yeah. You know, when I was little like you, I dreamt of the stars. I think it's fair to say in the language of your age that I live my dream. <laughs> I own the stage. Gave it 110%. Ooh, look at this. Do you still feel safe with me, Craig? Hmm. <laughs> Gone out with your mates, huh? No. I am a stupid, selfish man, always have been. Mm. I should have made you go. I should never have come here. Craig, very soon I won't be here. Mm. My time is running out. I don't mean exit door. Silence will fall when the question is asked. The thing is, Craig, it's tomorrow. I can't put it off anymore. Tomorrow is the day I'm... <laughs> Tomorrow is the day I... So... You didn't teleport down. You climbed up. Ooh! Very deep below. I've seen something similar before. Oh, wow. You are compatible. You are intelligent. Oh, no. Is he gonna get... Oh no! I'm not intelligent, you don't want me! I'm going to die, Craig. Tomorrow I'm going to die, but I don't mind if you don't prove me right! Right! Wow! Emotions eradicated, conversion complete. That should trigger him, right? <laughs> She's gonna see this. She's like, ah, oh, they've made up. With love. <laughs> yeah. No, that's impossible and also grossly sentimental, which in turn triggered a. a, a yeah. Power of love. Love. You blew them up with love. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a bit sick, isn't it? <laughs> Shut up, you two. <laughs> um, I hope Sophie won't mind. I need these. Oh, it is. Where are you going to go? America. Yeah. Sophie will be home Circling any back. second. Are you sure? I can't miss this appointment, Craig. Goodbye, mate. Ah! <laughs> Stag. Wow. You ride him, partner. Oh, thanks. You too. Big as these. <laughs> Who's Daddy's little boy then? Doctor. Oh. <laughs> Craig? <laughs> One last trip, eh? Huh. Tick tock goes the clock, and what now shall we play? No summers gone away. Oh, is it? Hello. Oh, it is. Such a lovely old song. But is it about him? Oh, don't try. Silence. Him. We've been far too thorough. Doctor River Song. How clever you are. You understand what this is, don't you? An impossible astronaut will rise from the deep and strike the Time Lord dead. Andy. It's a story. Impossible astronaut is. And this is where it begins. <laughs> it is her. It was her. Pond. We were always coming for you. I made you what you are. The woman kills, kills the, doctor. the doctor. Wow. Wow. I mean, I was pretty sure, but it's still.
right then, the penultimate episode of Series 6. Um, yeah, you know, I've got to say, um, and, you know, I, I kind of mentioned this during the episode as well. Yeah, it is surprising that they, uh, that they're choosing this to be the lead up to the grand finale. Though, of course, you know, right at the conclusion there, there is quite a substantial tie-in. Uh, I mean, essentially, it's oozing. The beginning is the end and the end is the beginning, isn't it? Uh, as the eye patch lady uh, states, you know, the story is just beginning or it begins now. Though, of course, I've already kind of seen how it all plays out. Uh, hence, you know, the beginning is the end and the end is the beginning. Uh, but yeah, wow. Uh, so yeah, you know, official confirmation that indeed it is River Song in the astronaut suit. Um, now, you know, as you'll remember, I, I was pretty confident about that being River Song back then in The Impossible Astronaut, uh, and I kind of discussed it in the post-episode portion, uh, but now I know kind of the actual truth behind it or the story behind it, right? The lead up to it. Um, she wasn't, I mean, she might've escaped for a bit, but you know, they, they always knew about her, you know, they kind of almost let her be. And I'm speaking of the eye patch lady and then the silence, her owners. It all kind of, you know, circles back to those amazing episodes in the beginning of the series. Though, of course, that means now that they're about to head there, you know, everyone's kind of about to head to uh, Lake Silencio. Um, and, you know, the doctor is about to put out the, the postcards, you know, tart is blue, though that just happened to be a coincidence, right? Uh, as he just borrowed them from Sophie, um, from Craig. Uh, of course, you know, I'll speak of Craig, um, who I actually didn't mind. You know, like I mentioned, it was actually a pleasant surprise this time. You know, of course, the first time I saw James Corden and had this really <laughs> bit of an outburst almost, right, to see him on my screen. But as you'll remember, you know, in my post-episode uh, discussion, I mentioned, yeah, you know, um, throughout the episode, he kind of, eh, yeah, it was actually kind of charming to have him in there. So to, you know, have him... Uh, or it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, right? It was actually um, quite enjoyable. And I'm speaking of the lodger and his first appearance there, James Corden, that is. Um, so this time it was actually a pleasant surprise, though a surprise nonetheless, because I was not expecting this type of episode uh, as the lead up, as a penultimate episode. Uh, but I'll come back to that, of course. Let's kind of focus on that ending, right? Um, so yeah, uh, so as of this point, Amy has to be replaced at some point. Listen, I'm not sure if that's actually a thing that's going to be a part of this final episode, showing us Amy being taken, right? Uh, and then being replaced by her ganger. Uh, as the doctor confirmed, it must have been at some point before America, right? And that's coming up now, that's coming up. Um, because tomorrow is the day the doctor dies uh, and the doctor knows it. Um, and of course, you see throughout this episode, that aspect certainly plays a part. He's really quite introspective, uh, melancholic. It was really starting to remind me of Tennant's final few days, right? Final few moments, uh, you know, the, the tour, essentially, right? Uh, but, you know, it appears that as of this point, he legitimately believes that he's going to die, right? It doesn't, I mean, you know, there's that... There's that aspect to this, right? The doctor lies and that applies to so many situations. But, you know, here it, it, it really does feel like he doesn't have some kind of uh, plan or something in, in mind, you know, as far as I know. But yeah, it all kind of circles back nicely, doesn't it? Because now this explains those 200 years. Uh, yes, for Amy and Rory, who do make a cameo appearance in this, um, it, it's essentially a few months or a few years, perhaps. But for the doctor, clearly it's been uh, much longer, right? Decades even. Uh, though, of course, you know, the passage of time is a bit different for someone like the doctor, uh, a time traveler, essentially. But yeah, he's been spending a lot of time by himself, much like Tennant in, you know, the days leading up to his final uh, goodbye. And, you know, speaking of Amy and Rory's uh, cameo, Amy, who is essentially <laughs> a model, Right at this point, so certainly a few mo months. I mean, more than a few months have passed. Uh, it's got to be a couple of years at this point, right? Um, but yeah, you know, she's made it as a model, and you know, I love the name of the perfume, Petrichor, right? Uh, and then of course the slogan as well. Um, so you know, 
this is certainly the Amy and Rory that he drops off in the God complex, right? And then of course, a lot of time has passed since then. But you know, looking at it from the doctor's perspective, it's been a long time, essentially, right? Uh, he's seeing them after a long time. And you know, that, that smile, you know, again, you know, it's bittersweet. It, it really is bittersweet. You feel a sadness, but you also feel uh, that he is happy. He's happy that they kind of moved on. They, they were able to move on and have this life, create this life for themselves. You see that his heart or his hearts are happy in that moment, right? Though, of course, he also, as much as he wanted to, he could not approach them either, right? Because I think he has to keep their um, timeline intact, right? Um, he, he, he just can't step in right now. But yeah, let's kind of circle back to Craig, um, James Corden returning. Um, because Sophie doesn't really play much of a part, right? Um, other than the beginning and the end. Uh, but yeah, you know, I love this ongoing thing and I kinda, I'm kind of hoping for yet another one, perhaps a follow-up uh, in series seven. You know, can you believe it? I'm asking for yet another James Corden appearance. Yeah, like I said, I changed my mind, you know? He, he, he's been great. I think he's been great. Uh, in the lodger and in this episode as well and I think a reason for that is this really great chemistry that Matt Smith and James Corden seem to have like it's really quite charming to see them together it feels like a bunch of friends you know good friends a uh, bunch of lads kind of you know the humor bouncing off of each other humor at each other's expense mainly at Craig's expense but you know he takes it in in stride as well um, of course, you have Baby Stormageddon, a.k.a. Alfie. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, 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 some really charming moments, right? Uh, and of course, you know, having a baby in that situation, you see that the doctor is kind of coming back to Craig, um, making the social call, as he calls it, uh, at a different phase, at a different point in Craig's life. Um, now, you know, it's all about uh, helping him tackle... Um, something else, you know, being a dad, being a father. And you see that ultimately the power of love, <laughs> once again. Of course, in this specific case, the power of parental love, right? The power of a father's love, right? Or the love of a father for his son. Uh, it kind of makes <laughs> James Corden, James Corden, uh, Craig, um, fight the impossible, essentially, right? You know, in that sense, I've got to say, the, the Cybermen did absolutely nothing for me in this. Uh, it's just like a, uh, you know, uh, maybe it's time to put them aside. But again, you know, anytime I say that, I remember uh, the rights issues, right? That they do have to use them uh, before a specific amount of time before they lose the rights or something. I know that was the case for the Daleks, at least. I'm not sure if it applies to Cybermen, but yeah, here it's, they're just inconsequential. They're just kind of there, right? Uh, you know, I'm sure for many of uh, longtime Doctor Who fans uh, and, you know, fans of the classic even, yeah, you know, that's, it's not the greatest outing for Cybermen, is it? <laughs> Given how easily they're defeated. But, you know, I must admit, in this specific case, the power of love, yeah, you know, it's a bit cliche, of course, and it's been done already in this season, or not this season, this series. But, you know, something about Craig and, you know, him... Uh, coming to terms and growing into the shoes of becoming a father and, you know, something about, you know, this specific type of love uh, for his son. Yeah, you know, I, I dig it. It was fine. I didn't mind it. You know, it didn't make me roll my eyes. Um, I get it. You know, in this case, it's almost as if, yeah, you give it a pass. You give it a pass. Though, you know, Craig finds out that uh, indeed, or essentially being by the doctor's side is not the safest place as he originally kind of uh, stated or assumed. No, in fact, the doctor almost, almost loses another one. He essentially lost. Though, of course, you know, the doctor didn't force Craig into any of this. He tried his best to, you know, tell him to go home. But Craig, who is a good friend, right, and it's believable, um, he doesn't let the doctor on his own. He wants to help the doctor. Um, but, you know, there was actually even potential here for a much darker ending, right? I feel like it was never going to happen, right? Um, but, you know, if you go down that path, imagine he actually does lose Craig, right? And Craig does become a Cyberman. Uh, and now, you know, Stormageddon or Alfie has lost his father and Sophie has lost her husband or her partner, her, her companion. That 
that that really would have pushed the doctor over the edge, right? Then he really would have leaned into the I've lived too long aspect of it. I mean, there's a lot of great moments in this one. You know, the doctor and Alfie in the room, right? As Craig steps out to get milk. Wow, that's, that's, wow, that's a fantastic scene. That's, that's really one of the standouts of series six for me. You know, the contrast there, right? Uh, Alfie, who has so much ahead of him, and the doctor certainly hopes that he has just as much fun uh, as he had. Um, and, you know, a lot of these things are in the past tense, right? Oh, uh, you know, I lived my dream. Uh, I gave it 110%, right? Took center stage. Um, yeah, uh, you know, I hope you have just as much fun as I had. All of that, right? All in the past tense. And how about the fact that it's the doctor and Matt Smith specifically with a baby? I feel like a lot of fans, a lot of Matt Smith fans, um, yeah, that must have been a really charming moment. It certainly was for me, right, to see him with that baby, right? Uh, and, you know, that's a real deal. That's a real baby. And I love those real moments because you're not acting with a baby, right? So I f it felt so real. It felt so um, authentic. You know, him having that giggly moment as uh, that baby, uh, baby Alfie in this case, is kind of looking right at his face. And you see in Matt Smith's like, face and his reaction, that felt like an actual reaction, <laughs> you know? But yeah, you know, ultimately, it's a charming episode um, other than the Cyberman aspect. Again, that did absolutely nothing for me. Um, it was just kind of there, right? Um, but yeah, you know, like I said, I hope I get a follow-up, a third uh, meeting, right? Or a check-in uh, down the line, perhaps. Um, maybe even get to see an older Alfie, Stormageddon. Um, yeah, that could be nice. That could be fun. Um, I'm not sure if it happened, but, you know, I guess I'll find out. I'll find out soon enough once I get to Series 7. Um, but of course, you know, um, yeah, it feels like it was kind of just added on right at the end, but I, I think it was needed, of course, right? Leading into the, the grand finale. Uh, River Song, you know, she's in that suit uh, and she's in that river um, or in that lake, sorry. But I feel like a lot of really interesting things are about to go down in that episode leading up to that moment. Uh, of course, the doctor's not going to die. I said this in the, in the first episode, the impossible astronaut. Of course, there's going to be something um, that explains this, right? Um, somehow gets him out of this or gets them out of this. There's got to be something that goes down. So yeah, that really should be good fun now that it's circling back all the way to the first few episodes of the series, of series six. Uh, right then, uh, I think that's about it for this one. If you enjoyed that, consider dropping a like, consider dropping some comments, giving your thoughts. If you're interested in early access or perhaps even full length, uh, consider checking out the Patreon page. And the links for that are in the description and the pinned comment. Also, you'll find links to my social media, if that's your thing. Um, right then, thank you for joining me for this one, and I hope to see you again soon for the next one. Until then, take it easy. Mm -hmm.